welcome to another episode of World of Tanks and Regani Titan. And despite my thinking that I would do otherwise, I actually went and bought the Thunderbolt. Because when I was looking at the store prices, the price actually was small enough that I thought, you know, it's worth getting. And while I was at it, what really caused me to look at the prices in the first place was that I saw that there was a trade-in program starting again. The trade-in period ends next Monday, that's April the 8th. So it's a pretty short time. So basically you can trade in an old tank and you get a certain amount of gold uh, reduce, reduction, should I say, on the price. The reduction is based off the tier of the tank. So I traded in the... And you can only trade one tank per tank you're buying. So I traded in the Ripper and I traded in the T14. I'm kind of sorry I didn't trade in the t Champion as well, but I probably didn't have enough gold left to buy anything significant or that I was interested in at that point. So obviously the closest the tier to the tank you're buying the cheaper you'll get the tank for um, and it's fixed you know you get so much that's it but since I had two of the three parts uh, for winter games done I was tight to a 75% reduction in the Thunderbolt and I thought okay if I'm getting rid of the Ripper um, I might not have a lot of American what do you call it um, Low tier American tanks that if I wanted to train up drivers to fill up gaps in the American tech tree that I might want to use in the future, then I might need a low tier American tech trainer. So I bought the Thunderbolt and it's actually a pretty decent tank. It's, you know, not overpowered or overwhelming or anything like that, but it's actually overall a pretty decent tank. Um, the gun is probably the worst aspect of it. I mean, it's a Sherman, it's not terribly mobile. It is, uh, and it's light on the penetration side, so it will struggle against uh, higher tier tanks and hi uh, high tier heavy tanks, especially if it's bottom tier. It does, however, have blistering rate of fire and pretty good DPM. And I think, you know, I mean, I'm playing it here with the crew that came with it, so I have no skills trained. Now, it's a fully trained crew, so they're training mentor at the moment, so I have no skills trained. As you can see, my view range doesn't quite reach my uh, I'm spotted range but I would say that once you have a few skills trained up once you have recon and situational awareness and brothers in arms and this thing you would e easily have a bit of margin of safety where your view range will exceed your detected range uh, by a bit I mean it's never huge in anything but it will definitely give you the opportunity to bring this gun into action in areas where you could, where it would be most effective uh, you're most effective as a kind of support tank. You're going to be uh, reliant on stealth and... Well, that's, I suppose it's not a terribly stealthy tank either, but you're still going to rely on remain hidden, or at least remain unnoticed. Um, so you want to be somewhere where there's a lot of other tanks sort of helping you out, or it's at distance. I mean, the gun is good enough um, to perform at distance, but your biggest problem is going to be heavily armoured tanks. The gun won't perform against heavily armoured tanks. So you're going to have to shoot for weak spots, rear areas and stuff like that, and you're going to have to get behind them or get side shots or rear shots out of those kind of tanks. But once you can do that, it's going to be a very effective tank. Now it's a tier 6 Sherman, it's an easy 8, so the frontal armour will bounce shots, um, but you won't be able to rely on it, especially against t t t t tank destroyers, higher tier tanks and stuff like that. So, um, but, you know, it's not terrible. Um, and your turret's going to be, turret front's going to be pretty, pretty decent as well. So, overall, I think it's a um, pretty decent tank. And, I mean, I've performed as well as can be expected here in um, Lakeville. It's not a role that I would have taken on the, the Sherman down that road but nobody else was inclined to go with, go on it and it has to be it had to be covered um and i think i've been I've been one of the better performers now a team like our team they didn't go into the town at all um they spent all the time on the lakeside shooting uh, stuff that they could see coming up along the edge of the lake on either side and um, they pushed against the the valley when they didn't have the numbers and should have defended, so we're now caught the cross for and paying the price. Like we're going to be, uh, there's no way we're going to win this because the tanks are under fire from both sides, so to speak, and these guys are now in control of our cap circle. Uh, we'll have more or less complete control of our cap circle as soon as somebody turns their gun my way and 
puts me out of the game because I'm just a one shot kill. There it goes. The RL44, and he has no trouble punching through the front of my armor. Um, not with the. I think I need the guns pretty much on the RL44. Will probably do the job. Uh, French guns have good penetration, they generally have poor uh, gun handling, but the penetration on the French tanks is usually on the good side. Now, I was fortunate enough most of the time, I think, to play it uh, top tier or. Yeah, pretty much top tier in the games that I've had, the three or four games that I've had in it so far. Um, I don't think I've played it in a bottom tier game, but it will see, was it tier 6, tier 7, tier 8? So it will see tier 8 uh, battles, and I suspect that it will find uh, some tier 8 battles very, very challenging, because again, the penetration of the gun is on the low side. The Cromwell gun, for instance, I've got the Cromwell B as one of the... Uh, tanks that I traded in for and it's a better got better penetration now it's not got better gun handling the gun handling on the Sherman is much better than on the Cromwell B so we see another example of it in action here because these are relatively short games on the Panama map on the encounter mode and again it's very much a tier 6 and there's actually quite a few Thunderbolts uh, in action quite a few Italian tanks as well it's just um uh, I suppose a lot of people got it and they want to try it out. Um, I think. So there's quite a few of them on the battlefield. And this is the kind of an ideal, again, operation for this kind of tank. Now, it's not very fast. Um, we're about 14 kilometers an hour coming up that hill. And I think we might hit 24 on the flat. Which is slow enough, um, certainly for a medium tank. But at the same time, uh, this is a actually pretty decent matchmaking and not a bad map for a tank like this. There's the Jumbo Sherman. I do remember that when I played Sherman's uh, Easy 8s and Jumbo Sherman's, must be five years ago now, that I actually preferred the Jumbo. I always felt that I did better with the Jumbo, although looking back at my stats, it looks to me like I actually did better on the Easy 8, statistically. Um, even if I did very, very poorly in comparison to now, I mean, it was an average damage of like 550 or something like that on either, I think 550 on the Easy 8 and 530 or something like that on the Jumbo Sherman. Nope, but it was worse than that. I had 430 on the Jumbo Sherman in three times as many battles and about 530 or 550, I think, on the Easy 8. And in the four battles I had um, earlier in the week, I had 730. Um, was my average damage so as you can see I have I've improved in my ability to keep the tank alive I would say rather than my ability to shoot straight because as far as I know my shooting has been at a steady 60% since I started looking at my statistics uh, it's never really varied from that much I hit about 60% of the time so I've not gotten better at shooting over the last five years, but I have gotten better at keeping tanks alive. And all realizing that this kind of game, for instance, me and that other than the bolt is g getting nowhere for me. I'm taking damage because he's able to shoot, um, I'd say, into my lower front plate. From the top of the hill, he's shooting up at me, and I'm shooting against very well sloped frontal armor, and I'm not going to um, do any damage to it. So let's go somewhere else and see if I can do damage to somebody else, so that VK3001H is looking like a good candidate there, I know he's sloped away from me and it's not going to be the easiest thing to hit, but he's not the most well armoured of tanks either, um, and we are getting more or less side shots, that one bounced, let's go lower and see if we can get it up into the drive mechanism and uh, that one went through and the last one went through. And had the added, added benefit of tracking him in place so that we could keep him keep him locked down so that it would make it easier to shoot him. And now there is a Churchill in the cap circle and nobody seems to be doing anything about it. He's probably behind buildings from the guys across the valley. Actually, I'm not quite sure what's down there in the Panama map. I have so rarely gone down the valley of the Panama map that I have no idea what he's hiding behind or against. Could be rocks for all I know. Maybe rocks in the river. Probably rocks in the river, actually. 
Uh, but whatever it is anyway, there's nothing between me and him on this side, so I'm putting most of my rounds through him. But somebody else gets the kill shot because he backs out from behind whatever rock he was hiding up behind. However, not to worry, we have another volunteer and that IKV s comes out, we manage to track it. And well, that pretty much dooms him. And there is a hidden, I don't know, what is it, Italian tank? I'm not sure, I think they're Italian tanks, P-43. Yeah, and he goes vanished, but I get a critical hit. However, I didn't realize when I, had, when I was playing that I let my uh, turret, my gun sights drop there. So the second hit wasn't going to do anything, because the first one was barely into the tracks. So I should have actually, if anything, raised my sights slightly. Now we have um, a Jumbo Sherman, actually, and we're getting sight shots. Okay, we bounced the first one. But once you get out of the side shots, the Shermans are easy enough. Um, they're easy enough targets, and I'd say even the Thunderbolt won't be difficult. It's a bit better armored in the front half of the side than the back half, so it's probably better off shooting through the engine deck rather than through the or towards the fighting compartment in the front under the turret. But still, the better anti-tank guns in the game. I don't think we'd have a lot of trouble with it, even even with the side armor. So we have another Thunderbolt and we're getting side shots into it, but I'm taking hits from across the field and he's not showing up wherever it is. And there's another one there bounced off the front of the armor and there's a Dicker Max is it. So I fire actually through the wood and the stack of wood. I was more or less wanted to get rid of the stack of wood, I was just using the DPM, but the shot actually went all the way over and hit the uh, the Dicker Max now, admittedly. Even if it was a log of timber that travelled all the way across the valley and hit the Dicker Max, it'll probably penetrate. It's not like the Dicker Max has anything in the line of armour. Now, speaking of armour, Valentines do have armour. Um, quite quite good armour, but they are tier 4 to my tier 6. Thunderbolt and something else. P40, whatever it is. 43 is it. And another Thunderbolt, and I am not... Yeah, he's completely behind a rock, and therefore I'm not going to get a shot at him from here. So, uh, Churchill is rather optimistically going on top of a cliff. Churchill's have no gun depression at all. Um, he would have to rock the entire tank over the edge of the cliff and hope that he didn't fall off in order to get a shot down in that general direction, even if there wasn't a rock between him and the enemy tank. However... Game over, and that was actually a pretty respectable damage output as well. So, yes, if you can keep this tank alive and keep the gun in the game, and you're judicious about your targets and go for targets you can hit and damage, then you can you can do the damage output on this tank. So we get a second class mastery, we did over a thousand damage. We get a second class mastery, we did we get a confederate because we had fired at so many enemy tanks and got 575 assisted damage. It didn't take us very high on the table because there was people out there that did considerably better than us, but you know, it was respectable enough performance and I certainly would be happy enough with it. Well, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and if you've not already done so, please subscribe. I'll catch you all again soon. Bye for now.